This video is a tour of a recent trip to Las Vegas when we stayed at the SLS Las Vegas Hotel and Casino. Boom chicka boom chicka boom chicka boom chicka boom chicka boom chicka boom. We went to Vegas for a three day weekend so Chris could attend a conference. So there are lots of hotel options in Las Vegas, but we settled on a Starwood property because we had a couple of free night stays that were about to expire. Oh look, remember the perk where I got my gourmet coffees every morning. And another great perk of the SLS is that it's located on one of the stops of the Las Vegas monorail system. Yeah, so while you had the rental car, this gave me the option that I could go down the strip and maybe go to a tourist attraction or do some shopping or go to a different casino. So this is the hotel check-in area. It can be rather busy at times, but check-in was handled very efficiently. Down the hall to the right outside the door is a uh, large parking deck where the hotel provides complimentary parking. Oh, and I understand that the hotel is also transitioning to a W brand here in the near future. Now let's take them on a tour of our room. The hotel has three towers, the World Tower, the Story Tower, and the Lux Tower. Yeah, I remembered our room number because we were in the second tower, 24th floor, room number five. Each of the towers has their own decor. We stayed in the Lux Tower, and quite frankly, I was a bit concerned that the Marie Antoinette <laughs> tapestry on the wall was going to be a little bit disturbing, but she and I got along okay. Because we are frequent travelers to Starwood properties, we were able to use three of our room upgrades to get a deluxe suite. As you come into the room, there's a powder room on the right. Las Vegas can be pretty gaudy, but I really like that this is a black and white theme, lots of chrome and mirrors. It's really toned down in my opinion. This is a two room suite. As you come in the door off the hallway, the first thing you notice in the living room is the view, is all the fabric panels hanging on the walls. At closer inspection, uh, this was a pretty nifty idea because the tones were black and white and subdued. They were just simply hung from grommets near the ceiling. And I was really concerned when I saw this online that it was going to be too overpowering, but it ended up being a very pleasant interior. Let's show everybody the details of the room and we'll start over here in this corner by the bedroom door. One of the few pops of color in the room are these real crystal glasses. The bar making area also includes a jigger, ice bucket, and other items you would need to make mixed drinks. One thing to note is that the refrigerator is already full and really not available for you to store your personal items in. And everything you see here would be for an additional fee. Taking a look around the remainder of the living space, there is a pedestal, marble-topped, conference-style table with six leather chairs. This was a wonderful place for Joanne and I to eat food that we brought back to the room, and also I spent uh, several hours working there. There's an enormous slip-covered sectional sofa, and then most of the furniture in the space is either mirrored or chrome. So there's a small end table, blackout curtains on all of the windows, or blinds. Or this absolutely stunning view of the desert of Las Vegas. <laughs> Which we actually preferred to leave everything open. The light fixtures look like they had been gessoed. I don't know, there's some kind of medium that was covering all of the light fixtures, which was very, in my opinion, artsy, but Marie Antoinette, as we said before. Kind of spooky, actually. <laughs> this widescreen TV was both telescoping and pivoting, so you could turn it toward the sofa or you could turn it toward the table. One of the neat things about the in-house TV system is that it provides detailed menu information from all of the restaurants that are located down on the lower level and you can have that food delivered to your room. We didn't take advantage of the in-house room service, but we did bring back some food from across the street. Within walking distance. That too. Moving into the humongous bedroom space. We'll show you the bathroom on the right. 
in a minute. Another widescreen TV and a king size bed. I would say this was a California king, wouldn't you? I'm not sure, but boy, it sure was comfortable. <laughs> and then more tapestries on the walls or canvases. And this, I think this was about a 13 foot chaise lounge. Of course, you get two bedside tables with all of the hookups for your digital devices, remote control, slippers. Yeah, and there's a bench and a really cool piece of stainless steel wood. <laughs> I would say it was chrome dipped. Oh, and don't forget, if you're in Las Vegas, you have to have a mirror over the bed. Table for two, place to sit down and enjoy those cocktails you mix at your bar in the other room. With the spooky chandelier and the colored crystal glass. And the view out the back. Overall, this was ample space. I used the chaise lounge, actually, for my suitcase and kind of made this my little corner of the room. Ample space is a bit of an understatement, I think. The, <laughs> the size of these two rooms and the bath was just extraordinary. This is what the windows look like with the blinds down. Each of the two rooms have their own individual thermostats. We did, I think, an okay job of keeping a balance and a comfort level uh, temperature-wise. Mm -hmm. Then a full-length mirror. We didn't really use this desk or chair over there. The only one thing that really bothered me about this room was one of Marie Antoinette's fingernails was not painted, so I almost went and got some fuchsia nail polish and filled that in myself. The bedroom had a nice desk set up with uh, plenty of electricity connections for laptops and such. And the internet connectivity was kind of marginal. What do you think? Yeah, I had difficulty getting connected at times. One thing I can tell you for sure though, pound for pound, this room had more mirrors per square foot than any we've ever stayed in. <laughs> yeah, try filming all this in a room full of mirrors and not get yourself in the shot. Speaking of mirrors, let's make our way into the bathroom. I liked that we have a little bit of pink in here, makes it kind of feminine. That and dual sinks and a lot of chrome. Yeah, I love all the white. The tiles go all the way up to the ceiling and the mirror is backlit. Looking in the mirror, you can see the closet actually. This is a part of the room that I wasn't all that happy with. I would have preferred to have had an enclosed closet. However, we did get the use of free bathrobes and there in the corner is the ironing board. I did use it to hang my wet bathing suit from. So that worked well. Mm -hmm. And then there's so much drawer space here. I'm going through the top row of drawers. We've got um, the middle drawer has a laundry bag and a shoe glove to shine your shoes and a shoe horn. Also the iron lives there. And the last drawer on the right has extra slippers. The bottom row of drawers includes a very nice safe and room for additional storage. My biggest problem with the sinks was that they were shallow and there's no drain stopper, so it was very difficult for me to rinse out my bathing suit. There were a ton of amenities available, so if you forgot something, not to worry. Hey, so you know how much I love washing my hands? Well, this place had the most awesome bar soap I think I've ever seen in a hotel. Yeah, I like the shape of it, and it also had this texture like, I think one of the ingredients was sugar. Okay, so can we talk about the shower now? Sure. I mean, one of the nicest parts of a nice hotel room is a nice bathroom, and what makes a nice bathroom is a nice shower. Then some people would think that some of these bath products provided by the spa downstairs also make a nice shower. The spa also has spa services and massage. One of the things I really like about this shower is the shower system with the traditional shower head in the wall and the rain head in the ceiling. And you have plenty of towels. The toilet is in its own room behind that door with the full length mirror and there's also a bathroom scale in there. Now I know one of your favorite things to do was to spend time at the pool. That's right. I just went and picked up my towel and then scoped things out to try to find the best chair. I was surprised at the number of these, I don't know, fully furnished cabanas throughout the pool area. Yes, and each one had its own television, mini bar, and I think they may have even come with their own personal attendant. For a fee, of course. Now there are actually two pools in this area with the bar dividing them in the middle. 
One pool was heated, one was not. I just love these two pictures that you texted me while I was at my conference. I'm just glad I brought my earplugs because I was reading and the music was very loud. So let me tell you about one of my favorite things about the hotel. That's the view at sunset. From the 24th floor? Yes. You could see some of the strip, there was Trump Tower right across the way, and the beautiful mountains as the sun went behind them. That was gorgeous. I have to agree. So down to the boom, chicka boom, chicka boom, main floor. Yeah, this is where you have access to the casino, all the restaurants, and the pools. And the loud music. Because we're SBG Platinum members, we received two $15 certificates for breakfast each morning, which we enjoyed in the Northside Cafe. And their food here was really good with a lot of options, but I always got the chilaquiles verdes, big enough to share. Don't be deceived by the soft background music. We're in Las Vegas after all. Yeah, we had to edit out that loud music so you could hear us. We're gonna take a walk around the perimeter of the casino and start off by a view of the high rollers room. Yeah, just for VIPs, we weren't in there at all. <laughs> The first restaurant is Clio, a Mediterranean style restaurant with a wood burning oven. Three of the four walls of the casino are covered by restaurants. The second restaurant is Katsuya, a Japanese style restaurant. With sushi and sashimi. While we didn't eat at Clio's or Katsuya, we did eat at 800 degrees. Yeah, it was really good. This is a Neapolitan pizzeria. You can pick your crust, they have a gluten-free option, and then choose your fresh ingredients. They literally put your pizza in the oven in front of your eyes, 800 degrees for 60 seconds, and it comes out perfect. The hotel hosts two entertainment venues, the Sayers Club and the Foundry both of which have live entertainment. Bazaar Meat is an upscale restaurant with an award-winning chef. They serve unique meats from all around the world. We recorded our tour of the casino and restaurants in the late morning, so the crowds weren't very heavy. But by looks of people coming in in the evening when we were headed out, I imagine all these places are pretty full up at night. Okay, I've got to tell them about this place. This is Umami, beer, garden, and sports book. The best hamburger I've ever had in my entire life. So much loved it that we went there twice. I like the shoestring, I like the shoestring, I like the shoestring french fries. <laughs> Say that three times real fast. So that ends the tour of the nightlife floor. With the casino, the entertainment, and the restaurants. So we're going to leave you with an aerial view of the pool from our room. Oh, and there is a second pool, but because it was the beginning of the season, it wasn't open yet. It's called the Lux Pool. It's for adults only. Go. I can cut it. Are you sure? <laughs> so let me tell you about what I like best about Las Vegas, <laughs> the hotel, One the of room, my favorite things. The pool. One of my, okay. <laughs> As SPG Platinum members, we receive brief... As SP... <laughs> okay, are you finished? <laughs> Three of the four walls of the... What the hell is it called? No, what's it called? The casino. Casino. Today I would like to formally announce my retirement from making videos. <laughs>